with Sins of a Solar Empire 2, finally a reality, let's look at all the other similar games starting with Stellaris. It is probably the most famous real-time space 4x grand strategy game at this point and thanks to its greedy publisher and industrious developer, it is also one with the most content, spread across 20 DLCs. Stellaris has no scripted main story or campaign, just like Sins doesn't, beyond those few lines of lore, but what it does have is a huge sandbox galaxy with numerous options, species and various origins for those, events and potential endgame content. This makes it much deeper than Sins and of course more complicated. In essence, every match is different and some much more than others, which is wholly dependent on your empire choices, picked victory objectives and gameplay style. But wary one should be of mistaking knowledge for control. Each aspect of this game, from research and diplomacy to plant management and fleet warfare, is interconnected with deep gameplay mechanics, which might look simple enough until you reach grand empire scale. Once you start dealing with megastructures, emergent crises, combat between thousands of ships across the galaxy and a hundred smaller things, you won't even notice you're not only past your bedtime, but also your alarm clock for school or work. A stellar game like this is of course standing at an 88 positive review rating on Steam. Now, you might find some online lists mentioning Homeworld as another game like Sins of a Solar Empire, but that to me is not a good comparison. Which is why when I made my list of Homeworld-like games, I didn't compare these two. If you are interested to see which games I found that do play like Homeworld, use the link above or below. While Stellaris might not be getting a sequel anytime soon, one old space real-time forex franchise did get one, Distant Worlds 2. It certainly looks similar to Sins and Stellaris, even with a somewhat larger scale depending on your game's setup, but when it comes to micromanagement and economy, it plays differently. This and some technical problems are the reason it has a 68% review rating on Steam. Because, you see, the developers of Distant Worlds 2 wanted to give you huge scale and the option to relinquish some control, so there is a lot of automation in this game. From how free trade ships move the economy you kickstart, research progresses on its own, to how fleets with predetermined orders fly across your empire and beyond, blasting pirates and stirring up trouble. You can customize these automation options, but until you master the game, you are more likely just to mess things up. Welcome back, explorers. A new dawn has finally come. Beyond traders and pirates, you have space monsters, alien colonies, galactic storms, and black holes to deal with in the sandbox mode or single player storylines with victory conditions. The user interface is key for this kind of a game, and while it has great zoom options and many types of sub-menus, the struggle to comprehend it all is real. In simple terms, Distant Worlds 2 is not for the casual player looking for real-time space combat, but for those who want empire building and management on a galactic scale. Now, there are two Star Wars games on this list, but I will start with the newer one, and since Star Wars Empire at War is from 2006, you get the idea just how underutilized this franchise is in Space 4X real-time strategy games, which I find very disappointing. Especially when you consider the fact that this game has a 97% positive review rating on Steam, meaning the audience is there and would welcome more such games. Gameplay might be divided between ground and space RTS battles and 4X Galactic Empire management, but it still fits the gameplay parameters of being a synth-like game. The cinematic camera gives you an amazing view of combat in space, where bases, simple resource collection and fast-paced starship combat leave every Star Wars fan breathless and always waiting for more. This is no doubt the reason why there are so many mods which expand and improve this part of the game with gigantic starships and many new Republic, Trade Federation and Empire models from all eras of Star Wars lore. Of these, I would recommend Towards Revenge, Awakening of the Rebellion, The Fall of the Republic and Empire at War Remake 
and I will make a separate video covering all of these which will be linked up here and below. Its official expansion, Forces of Corruption, gave us a new faction, units and heroes and even more lore to enjoy, which is exactly why the smaller galaxy is not an issue when there are so many stories and characters. I am just sorry there weren't any more content updates. May the force be with you as we wait for more such games. One more franchise which got a sequel is Star Ruler. It is also a massive scale 4x space RTS hybrid with everything from galactic politics to spaceship configuration editing. Its combat is more hands off than some would like but that just means you have to be better at preparing and designing your fleets and the ships in it. Another reason why its steam review rating is just about 80% is that players find the tutorial lacking while veterans dislike the change from how the original game looked. This might be one of the reasons why developers allow the game to be fully moddable, so players can change absolutely everything about it and upload their version to the Steam Workshop. Not only does this game work on Windows and Linux, but it can also be played with up to 28 players and AI in the same match. Do note that almost everything in Star Ruler 2 is complex in some way. Even diplomacy is unique with its use of cards and influence points along with voting. Exploration and colonization go hand in hand as your empire is hungry for new resources all the time and expansion is the only way to keep ahead of its all-consuming economy. Combat is also a bit different as your main flagships support their own squadrons which keep in tight formations, each specializing in some type of weapons. When those flagships and their bulky escorts meet enemies, fireworks happen and you will enjoy zooming right in there. This next game also has a sequel which deviated from its original one but from my own experience, reading other player opinions and looking at its 88% Steam review rating, it looks like AI War 2 was received much more positively than Star Ruler 2. It has all the hallmarks of a Sins game, with a huge galaxy-wide map and grand strategy slash RTS hybrid gameplay of fleet combat, territory control and empire building. The main enemy here is an actual AI, which has taken control of almost the entire galaxy, save for a little corner where you are starting on one small planet. But the machine would not stop when our enemies were shattered. Your task is to strategically expand your territory, choose your targets and send your fleets to strike at the heart of the AI. If you get too greedy, the game will punish you because the more your empire grows, the harder the AI is to defeat. Fittingly, since your arch nemesis is an AI, the actual AI in this game is very smart and will give you a good run in each match. Mod support is a big part of this game and the developer's vision for it. There are already many factions and map types to choose from, increasing replayability before you even dive into mods. An interesting game mechanic is hacking, which is quite fitting considering the game's setting and enemy type and you can hack anyone, friends and foe alike. The other and older Star Wars themed game which is similar to Sins is called Star Wars Rebellion and its setting is just after the destruction of the first Death Star. Because of its age and 1998 release date, you won't find many reviews on Steam, making the 90% review score a bit dodgy. Here you have about 200 planets to conquer while you try to manage resources, manufacturing, fleet deployments and assignments. The real downside of it being an old game is the lack of pixels to really enjoy spectacular looking battles. But the lore is there, down to every line of text, characters which could level up, X-Wing and Imperial Star Destroyer. There are agents and ground combat, but they are just a numbers game. Going forward to newer games, here is one from 2016 called Polaris Sector and it is very much an indie project. This is most obvious in its graphical and user interface design and a lack of any sort of story, events or unique lore. But what is a major bonus is how the developers worked very hard on making a space real-time strategy forex hybrid which isn't weighed down by a lot of micromanagement. 
This is partially because you can let the AI run your planets and it will do a great job of it, making them into powerhouses for your growing space empire. The research system is not just huge, but also another bright spot as it is done in a unique way and differs depending on the race you choose to play with. It adds a lot of variety to the spaceship design mechanics, which have very few limitations and each race has their own design. You can combine any ship hull with any weapons or systems you like and tweak them later to your heart's content. As for diplomacy and spying, they are in the game too, but they aren't deep or well executed and few players will find these useful. Combat is all about fleet size and picking a good mix of ships, but it is not very involved and you can auto solve battles. The pirates though are a real nuisance in this one and another reason why it has a review score of 69%. Now, this would be a poor list of since like games if I were to skip one of the oldest and greatest games which was close to revolutionary and subgenre defining for 4x slash RTS hybrids when it came out all the way back in 1999. This may have been the year of Homeworld and I made a list of games like Homeworld already, but this one is a different beast entirely. Imperium Galactica 2 built on what the first game brought to our PCs and its Steam version is also updated to look good. Well, better than it did in 1999 at least, and it has a review score of 86%. There are three actual campaigns in contrast to almost all the other games on this list. The time has come to conquer. It has all the hallmarks of a 4x game, meaning explore, expand, exploit and exterminate. From colonizing new planets and building up industrial potential, to researching new tech to put up on your warships. Unfortunately, it is another game that is hard to enjoy because of its controls and developers not making it easy for players to have a clean overview of all the solar systems of their empire. It is also very punishing on higher difficulties, becoming not just challenging, but almost impossible to win. Spying and agents are useful tools in this game and spaceship combat is also well done with lots of options for command and control. You have formations, can control time, issue orders when paused, so even when you have fighters, corvettes, destroyers and large capital ships, you can direct those battles in a satisfying way. I could now list off another two dozen games which have many similar gameplay elements as these games, but the thing is, they are also not fully real time. Some part of their gameplay is turn based and that is why I will put them all into a single separate video. The games on that list will include Endless Space, Sword of the Stars, Master of Orion, Star Drive, Remnants of the Precursors, Terra Invicta, Star Control, Space Empires, Ascendancy and many others. As for new games that will be coming out in the future that are like Sins, we might as well start with the actual sequel to Sins of a Solar Empire. It is already playable on the Epic Store and has multiplayer. The sequel brings a new 64-bit multi-core engine, which will make even bigger maps and fleets possible with increased visual fidelity. Planets will actually orbit stars and moons now orbit their planets. Ship turrets will be capable of tracking individual fully simulated missiles, making space battles even more spectacular. Will the story elements finally be more substantial or not? This has yet to be seen. There are four more games I would like you to keep on your wish lists and track their progress because I think they have great potential to give you as many hours of fun as you had in Sins of a Solar Empire. First of these is Falling Frontier, a game I mentioned in many of my videos of upcoming games, link to which is up here on the right and down in the description. This is an indie project by one main developer, but everyone has a hard time believing it when they see just how stunning this game looks. Seek nothing from the solar system but a lasting amity of reason and justice. Beyond the looks, there is a lot of depth to it, with resource collection, supply line management, placing minefields, upgrading and specializing space stations, rescuing friends or foes, and even interrogation of surviving enemy officers. 
It is not a galaxy-wide game, but the amount of planets, moons, asteroid fields and other stellar objects in this game world adds up to more than a big enough sandbox to play in. Its space combat starts with single ship engagements, but grows to fleet battles while the management and forex elements are on a much bigger scale. It keeps getting delayed, but also richer in content and gameplay. So I just hope the developer slaps a new release date and sticks to it this time. Another game you might not have expected to see on this list because of its smaller empire building scale, well, more like galactic company scale, is Space Rain. Just like in the X game series, here too you start with a single ship and grow both your business empire and your fleet as you play. The first person combat might not be what you were expecting to see on this list, but it is the late game that will interest you the most. There is a galaxy map on which you can claim sectors for your chosen faction and fight for their control against other corporations, receiving access to unique, corporation-specific arsenal of ship and weapons to grow your fleet with. Then, as you buy new ships and customize them, you begin to control a whole fleet and commit to new tasks in a different playstyle, by issuing orders from an RTS-like tactical overview. All ships, be they fighters or cruisers, have customizable hardpoints for weapons and systems as well as individual compartments, and all of these can be targeted and then disabled, disarmed or destroyed separately. As for more upcoming games with 4x and real-time fleet combat elements, there is also Ephemeris, whose name might change in the future, and I have covered it in my previous videos many times over, as well as giving it a full overview in a special video linked here and below. In short, beyond the RTS 3D combat, which is almost like homeworld just with no resource collection and building of ships, there is an entire 4x galaxy layer where you colonize and develop planets on which you actually build your fleets. The galaxy map in Ephemeris consists of a randomly generated set of star systems acting as nodes. There are already different planet types and these affect the colonization potential, fertility and production output of the planet. There will be food exporting and a trade network system to help specialized planets and a bunch of other planet relevant elements. Lastly, there is Fragile Existence, with its fleet of ships which is running from an arch nemesis and conquering new planets in order to find resources for new ships to continue their flight. Besides space fleet battles, this one also has ground warfare on top of the planet conquest and extraction of resources. You can seamlessly transition between the three layers and control all your forces which can be spread across multiple planets and star systems. It is also being made by a solo developer and in the Unity engine with a single player non-linear campaign alongside skirmish and scenario mode. There are detailed ship inventories in the game, hero-like leaders, fleet morale and loyalty mechanics. Players will research new tech hoping to get that extra edge to stay ahead of the relentless enemy force pursuing them to the ends of the galaxy. Use the card to learn about more such games, thank you for watching and happy gaming!